Hey everybody, welcome back to Will Park Garage. Today we're working on a 2010 Ford F-150 and we're gonna replace the timing chain and cam phasers. Stay tuned. All right guys, so if you have a 2004 to 2010 Ford F-150 with the 5.4 liter two valve motor, uh, you might be experiencing something similar to what's going on with this. So the customer brought it to me saying that um, it was sitting at idle, the thing would be idling really rough and he would hear like a chain metallic sound coming from the front. Uh, it's sort of a common issue with these. What seems to fail are the cam adjusters themselves. There's a spring in there that goes bad. Um, could also be co caused by um, poor maintenance, uh, basically oil changes that you didn't take care of on time. I believe these things call for a 5,000 mile oil change interval. Um, but basically, if you're not getting enough oil pressure to the to the adjusters, they can rattle, make some noises. Generally, it'll set a check engine light, but you'll get a rough running condition. So for this, I got a close kit and it basically takes care of everything. It's the timing chains, it's the guides, the tensioners, it even comes with the, uh, the cam sprockets or the adjusters, as well as the solenoids um, that activates those adjusters. So uh, it's not an easy job, but it's not very difficult either. There is just a lot you have to take off um, to do this. So I'm going to try to walk you guys through step by step to show you what really you need to take off. Uh, there are a few special tools. Um, mostly the only one I know of is um, there's a special tool to hold the cam sprocket so you can remove the cam uh, sprocket itself. Um, I don't have that tool so I'm going to do my best without it. Uh, I assume a lot of you guys probably will as well. So. Um, yeah, I'm gonna readjust the camera and then I'll basically show you guys what we need to remove to even get to the timing chain to start uh, removing a lot of the stuff. All right, so looking under the hood, uh, obviously this thing has an aftermarket air intake. Uh, you can ignore that. Um, I'm going to remove it just so I have better access. I might actually remove the battery so I have a little more room to work on as well. Um, but basically what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to remove the valve covers both on the right bank and the left bank. Uh, and we really need to get to that front timing cover. Okay guys, so I just wanted to give you a quick rundown of where I'm at right now. So, you know, it's a little hard, it's kind of hard to film in here, but uh, if you look down there, I've got the power steering pump removed. Uh, just for quick reference, those are held on with 10 millimeter bolts, uh, one towards the pulley, and then there's two in the back, the lower one being a stud, so there's a wire held on to that. That stud right about there. There's a bracket on it that holds the power steering line. Right down there, uh, there's a the similar stud that comes out. That bracket, or that bolt, has to come off. There's a bracket right about there that holds the, the cooler lines on. And then underneath the vehicle, towards the starter, there's a 10 millimeter bolt that holds this bracket here. It's, it's made to support the wires for the starter as well as the cooler lines for the transmission. Uh, I had a little difficulty getting that off uh, but once I had it off, it gave me better access to remove the crank sensor wiring. Uh, that was actually pretty difficult to get to, but I got to it from uh, underneath the engine. Um, what else? So you can see I've got all the coil packs out. I've got the harness disconnected from the injectors, the coils obviously, same on uh, the left bank. Uh, I've got all the pulleys off, uh, the idler pulleys, the tensioners. Uh, basically, where I'm at now is I need to remove the harmonic down, uh, balancer. Um, I got a three-drawer puller there. 
So I'm going to remove the harmonic balancer. Then from there, what I'm going to try to do is try to blow off a lot of this dirt and sand grit stuff that's uh, here where the valve covers are because I have to remove the valve covers. I don't want all that debris to end up in the engine. Uh, last thing you want to put is sandpaper inside your engine. So from both sides, I'm going to try to blow off as much of it as I can. And then I'm going to remove the valve covers. And finally, I'm going to remove my timing cover. Now looking at the book, it shows me all the front bolts, but it doesn't show me bolts on the bottom. Um, when I was underneath there looking, it looks like there's at least four bolts that come from the oil pan up into the timing cover. So I'm pretty sure I'm going to have to remove those as well. All right, guys. Well, first off, I want to say that was a pain in the butt. Uh, I live in the Northeast, therefore this vehicle does too. Every single bolt along the manifold side there uh, was basically rusted to smaller than a seven millimeter hex size when they started as an eight millimeter. Uh, so basically nothing would fit uh, to be able to get those bolts. Uh, driver's side was worse, passenger side I had only one that I had to contend with so that wasn't too bad. But of course the one I had to deal with on the driver's side was the one in that back corner over there so there's no room to really get in there. Um, but I bring this up because I wanted to show you guys the tool that I use. It's um, made by Irwin. Um, it's basically uh, a bolt extraction set. Uh, it'll take out studs, it'll take out uh, hex sizes, basically anything that's rounded off or not quite the right size. Uh, the way it works is it, it has a spiral cut into it um, that is designed that when you you know put reverse torque to get a fastener off it's tightening into the fastener that you're trying to remove. Uh, and it's you know it's a pretty decent size it goes up to a few different sizes. Uh, but this is what I use to get it off. Uh, they work best when you can get like a hammer on them so you can kind of tap them into place. Um, but uh, this is what saved the day so I didn't have to really fight to get these fasteners off. And I mean, here's the, the driver's side valve cover and you could see how rusted these, these fasteners are um, compared to what it's supposed to look like there. So from here, I'm going to set this thing at top dead center, or at least close to it. Uh, and then I'm gonna start taking all this stuff apart. Uh, like I said, I don't have the tool to hold the cam uh, sprocket in place while I remove these bolts. So I'm gonna have to get a little creative to make sure that cam does not jump. This is an interference motor. The last thing you want to happen is the pistons to contact the valves, because Besides replacing all this, you will then also be replacing your cylinder head or the valves, or let's just say it's a bigger job. So, uh, yeah, from here I'm going to set this thing at top dead center and we're going to start removing some stuff. Okay, guys, so I just wanted to show you the kit that I'm using. Uh, there's the part number right there for the timing chain kit for this. Um, I got this kit from Rock Auto. Uh, they were by far the cheapest uh, I saw, even with shipping, uh, to get this here. Uh, for instance, like uh, Advanced Auto Parts, I think, also carried it, but they were almost $100 more expensive than what I paid for this. Um, so, yeah, this is a complete kit. It comes with everything to do with the timing chain system. 
This here is the new sprockets. So this is the new cam sprocket, two of them obviously. And this is all the other components for the timing chain system. So two timing chains, uh, the actual solenoid for the cam adjusters, all the guides, the tensioner guides, and of course the two tensioners here. Uh, and then here's your crank sprocket. So this is everything you need to refresh the entire timing chain system here. Okay guys, so a couple of things I wanted to point out real quick. So this is the crankshaft with the keyway facing up in the 12 o'clock position. I know it's a little hard to see, but uh, there it is right there, 12 o'clock position. Uh, I use the harmonic balancer there just to uh, turn the engine clockwise. Uh, you don't want to go counterclockwise because you will jump the timing chain. Um, so make sure you only spin this thing clockwise. The next thing you want to check is on the right bank, make sure your R is facing up as well as the L on the left bank. If these are opposite, meaning they're down here, you need to rotate your crankshaft another revolution, 12 o'clock position, check that out. Uh, another thing you could check here is the lobes here on cylinder one. You want to make sure the exhaust lobe is coming up and your two intake uh, lobes there are facing towards the passenger side uh, front fender. So make sure those are in that position. Your, your markings on your sprockets, R and L, are both up. And now you can start disassembly of the timing components. So first thing, obviously, I need to take off the reluctant wheel. Uh, when you remove it, make sure you keep note of which direction it goes on. You want to put it back on the same, same way. Obviously, it's keyed, but you could put it on either direction. So I'm going to take that off, followed by my hydraulic tensioners on both sides. Then I'll take the tensioner guide, uh, followed by the chains, and then the guide itself. Uh, same with this side. Uh, hydraulic tensioner, tensioner guide, and then the bottom guide there. Uh, once all that's off, I can then take off my crankshaft sprocket. And then, uh, this is the part that's a little tricky for me. I don't have the special tool that bolts in here to hold the sprocket to remove the center bolt. So I'm going to have to be very careful when I remove this uh, that my crank, uh, sorry, that my camshaft does not spin. Okay, guys, so this is the right and left bank. Um, cam, adjuster, solenoid, and plate. I don't know what they're actually called. Um, and I don't know if it'll show up on camera, but if you look right down in there, you can see there's a little screen. Um, same for this one here and there. So I wanted to make sure that these were nice and clean of debris, no deposits, uh, no metal, anything like that in there. Um, I am replacing the solenoids um, at the very least, uh, the kit comes with new ones. So I have two new solenoids I gotta replace anyway. So at this point I'm gonna take them off and then I'm gonna take this into the parts washer, clean it uh, really well and dry it. You wanna avoid using any kind of abrasive or scraping uh, on this surface. It is a machine surface uh, and it does take um, you know, a special gasket for that. So just, just be mindful of that when you're cleaning these up. So, at this point, I'm going to clean these guys up as well as pretty much everything in here. Uh, I need to clean up, obviously, the mating surfaces where the timing cover goes. Uh, just, you know, clean up the surfaces where those cam adjuster plates were going. And while I'm at it, I'm going to clean up my valve cover uh, mating surface as well. That way, all the dirty stuff is done uh, and then all I'm going to do is put on new components. Um, I also, I left the oil in the motor. Uh, not so I didn't have to buy new oil, but I figured that way it would catch whatever dirt debris falls in there. And before I start this thing up, I could drain out all that dirty oil. 
and fill this thing back up with fresh, clean, uh, fully synthetic oil. Uh, again, this thing takes a 5W20 as per the manufacturer. So I want to make sure that I get that right oil back in this thing. Okay guys, I'm going to try to do this um, with a recording, no fast forward, anything like that. Uh, so the first thing I need to do, since everything is now clean, is I need to put the VBT solenoids back. Uh, I have new gaskets on them, they're all cleaned up. So I need to put those back on both sides uh, before I can put on my cam sprockets. So basically I'm going to put on the VBT solenoids, cam sprockets, uh, followed by the tensioner, the guides, the chains, all that other stuff. So let me grab the BBT solenoid plates and get those installed. Okay, so the right bank has three bolts on it. The two uh, flange head bolts go on the top. The other one with the washer is going to go on the bottom. That's what holds that guide in place. And I'm just going to run these down with the gun, but they're going to get torqued down to 89 inch pounds. Okay, followed by the VVT solenoids, and make sure that you have the R facing up on the right bank, which is the passenger side, and the pin is engaged in the camshaft. Then I'm going to just lightly run down the bolt. Uh, the other thing is make sure you're using a new bolt. Uh, the kit I bought uh, came with two new bolts for each uh, cam phaser. And the left bank, my L is facing up here. Okay guys, so this bolt here, we're going to torque it down to 30 foot-pounds and then an additional 90 degrees. Um, because of that 90 degrees, we're going to need something to hold this cam. Uh, what I did was I made up this tool here which is basically a pair of vice grips with a piece of the old chain on it. Uh, this way I can wrap it around the sprocket and tighten down the vice grips and it gives me something to hold that sprocket into place while I'm tightening down this bolt. Okay guys, in the front cover, you want to make sure that the grooves where the gasket sits in are nice and clean. 
You also want to go ahead and replace that front crank seal right away. Uh, it's easier to get to in this place. And also on the bottom where it goes into the oil pan or on the oil pan, you want to make sure this is also free of dirt, grease, and oil. Make sure any little bit gasket is still uh, clean from the corners there. And uh, basically just make sure everything is nice and clean. Okay guys, we're now ready to install the timing chain guides in both banks. Uh, I'm going to start here with the left side. Uh, both sides are going to get torqued down to 89 inch pounds for all four bolts. Okay, real quick guys, I wanted to point out this bolt. This is the one that goes through the cam adjuster here. Uh, it is the longer length, so just make sure you use that on the chain guide up top. Uh, again, this bolt still gets torqued down to 89 inch pounds. Okay guys, so it's now time that we're going to store the left bank chain. Uh, there's two marks on the top here. Uh, these two marks are going to line on either side of the cam sprocket uh, marks. Um, the lower mark here is going to line up with the mark on the crankshaft. And this is going to go on to the inner side of the crankshaft sprocket. All right, once you have it on, just make sure the marks here are in the middle of the two links on the chain, and you should be good. All right, now moving on to the right side bank. It's the same thing, double marks on top, single mark on the bottom on the crankshaft. We'll line up the crankshaft first, and then we'll get our marks onto the cam sprocket. Again, making sure that the two colored links are on either side of the mark on the cam sprocket itself. All right, from here, guys, you can see I've got the guides now in place. I've got the tensioners in. Uh, right now is a good check to make sure that your timing marks are all lined up. Um, you know, your crankshaft marks, make sure they're lined up. Make sure the left and the right bank are lined up correctly. Um, you know, make sure your seating surface is clean for the last time. Um, in this area here, we we're going to put a little bit of silicone where the cylinder head meets the block on both sides as well as the other bank. All right guys, now that everything's installed, we have our nice clean timing cover. I just want to point out the areas where I put the silicone here at the top corner, both sides, uh, both banks too, as well as where it meets the oil pan here. Uh, you want some silicone in those corners so you don't get any leaks along the bottom. The area here on the bottom doesn't need any kind of extra sealant. Um, the other thing is here, you want to make sure you put a little oil on this lip seal so it doesn't tear when you're installing it. So let's install this thing now. Okay guys, I just wanted to show the printout screen here. It shows the timing marks. It's a little easier to see here. Um, you can see how the links need to be on either side uh, for both banks, as well as where they need to be on the crankshaft sprocket. Um, you know, like I said, you can see it a lot easier here. Uh, this also points out the marks where you need to add the silicone to the corners of the cylinder head and the block, and the locations where they need to be. Uh, at the oil pan as well is where you need to put some sealant in the corners there so you don't get any leaks from um, where it meets the oil pan. I know it doesn't show it here but I also put some sealant in the top corners here where it's going to meet the valve cover. That way those corners are also sealed up when the valve cover is seated against it. Alright guys so I wanted to show you the different bolt sizes here. Um, you know, it, it gives you item numbers, the part numbers, as well as which bolt size they are. Um, the sequence to tighten these different bolts is a little different. And you can see here, tighten fasteners 1 through 15, 25 newton meters or 18 foot pounds. 
Um, step two, tighten fastener six through seven, uh, 48 newton meters to the dirty, five foot pounds. So, you know, you need to see which bolts need to go where um, onto the, the cover itself. Like, for instance, here we got bolt six. You could see where the bolt is, and it basically shows you what the torque spec is. So, I figured this would be helpful to see where all the bolts are. Um, the other thing is, here is the four bolts that are underneath for the oil pan. Similar thing here. Um, you're going to tighten those 20 newton meters and then an additional 60 degrees to tighten those bolts up. So just follow this here um, so you can get those bolts. Alright guys, that's it for today's video. As always, don't forget to subscribe and give this video a big thumbs up. Uh, if you have any questions, leave me a comment below. If I don't know the question, I'll do the best I can to answer the question within a day. Mm, okay, that's it. Thanks for watching. See you guys next time.